Hi. Why does this movie take me back? It was a movie. <laughs> it, it reminded me of the first time I bought one of those creature monster truck toys that were big in the 80s. It had characters and a plot and, uh, and some things happen. I was, and, uh... <laughs> well, like, honestly, like, I was never, like, really that annoyed with this movie. No, I wasn't it, annoyed either. It was just mm -hmm. sort of like, it was exactly what I expected is what it was. It is not better or worse than this kind of movie. It is, that is what I can say about this film. It is this kind of movie. It's, it's a movie that I know I'm going to forget immediately. Well, yeah, I was kind of drifting in and out a bit as I was watching it, but there's a lot of things that this movie is is like. It's a movie about a teen. I'll get to that in a second. Um, oh my god! Who uh, he works in a junkyard. He befriends a creature, and there's people after them, and the creature just wants to get back to his family. Look, this kind of movie's been getting made for 30 or 40 years. This is one of them. It's yeah. it's not worse than a movie than like a bad movie like that, but it's not it's not on the better end of the spectrum of it. It just does all of the things that those movies do. They got a free creech, free willy. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're if you're someone who was like, "Man, I wish there were still more movies like Herbie Fully Loaded." <laughs> you know, this movie my Thomas Lennon is in this and he wrote Herbie Fully Loaded. Herbie? Is it, Furby, Furby? Furby, Furby Fully Loaded. Fully Loaded. Oh, holy shit, when's the Furby movie coming? Long right, overdue. Right after the Emoji movie. Shit. <laughs> I got. Uh, I got a question. Um, was Was Big Red a sponsor for Monster Trucks? Or Twizzlers? Or yeah. a lot of other things. Well, Big Red was the weirdest one to me because mm -hmm. I don't even see Big Red in the store hardly anymore. And yeah. then there's just like giant Big Red vending machine. He's <laughs> drinking Big Red at one point. I'm like, uh -huh. who? When he first was drinking it, I was like, that's an odd choice. Who Who picks Big Red? That's how this movie got the $120 million budget that it has. I guess. Really, Paramount? Like, I know you let, like, the movie developer's four-year-old co come up with a story for this, but a hundred and some million, that's a little much. <laughs> no, I was, I was looking forward to this movie, even though it was exactly what I expected. I'm glad that it was made, because I appreciate the dedication to the pun. Yeah. Monster trucks. Mm. They're monsters in trucks. Uh -huh. Ta-da! There's and your it, movie! It gives you that. I'm sure the toys of this movie are, are fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, if I was a kid, I would probably enjoy it. And I think, like, other kids would probably enjoy this movie. So, I mean, I, I didn't find anything offensively bad about it. it no. Unmemorable in some aspects, but... I mean, it, there, there's a, how the movie is made and a lot of things... And it just sort of reminded me of, like, a January version of Pete's Dragon, which I saw <laughs> last year, which was actually really good. This is, like, a lesser version of that. But it it doesn't do anything. It, th there was never a moment in it where I felt just personally insulted, like, watching a Transformers movie, oh, which yeah, this yeah. movie also has a lot in common with. Definitely. Um, there during the chase, I was thinking exactly of Transformers. Yeah, the shit in the junkyard and all of that stuff. Right, it's like Transformers, except Transformers has an actual four-year-old directing it. <laughs> I This movie has surprisingly has a large cast. Yeah, when, the whole time I was thinking, like, what is Rob Lowe doing there? Uh-huh. What is, and he didn't seem to know either. No. <laughs> what is Danny Glover doing there? Why is he there? Danny uh -huh. Glover, Frank Whaley, Holt McCallan, he's the bad guy. Uh, Amy Ryan is in this. Barry Pepper. <laughs> wow. Even, uh, <laughs> the, but the two leads um, were not actors that I recognized, but they seem to be vaguely look like people you might recognize. Because I'm like, mm, yeah, I think they kind of look like someone I might know, but they're not. Lucas Till is MacGyver on the new MacGyver series. Oh, I haven't seen new MacGyver. And, 
Um, I wasn't sure. Like, I kind of took a gamble on that. I'm like, maybe Allison has seen <laughs> well, New MacGyver. Know, it's, a good, it's a good guess, but <laughs> I haven't actually seen New MacGyver. He's, um, he's Havoc in... I, I think he is. I think he's Havoc in X-Men. Um, and the girl, I couldn't quite place... But here's the thing. This is a movie where it, that has monsters and trucks and they're doing somersaults, leaps off buildings, climbing up buildings like they're the Batmobile and the Joel <laughs> Schumacher versions. And the most unbelievable thing about this is that our two leads are high school students. Oh my God. <laughs> when they showed him on the bus... Surrounded by children much younger it, than him, I yeah, was like, was, I, I was, was a little he held worried. back for no, a while. I, I was thinking something much more sinister was happening in that scene. <laughs> like, was... well, it's a good thing his mom's going out with a cop because this dude is gonna be on some kind of watch list for <laughs> hanging out on buses all the time. There's a bomb on the bus. He's got them held hostage. Mm-hmm. They can't go under so uh, so fast, otherwise the bus is gonna explode. And I... uh, monsters in it. Watching Lucas Till play this part is like watching, like, if, like, Elliot in E.T. was played by Henry Thomas now. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it's like. And, look, I mean, yeah, every movie has, like, a fucking 20-year-old playing a high school student. That's extremely fucking common. Holy shit. This is beyond that. When they're walking around with the students, they... (laughs) <laughs> they look like the teachers. Yeah. They are significantly older than all the extras that are walking around them that are age appropriate. She is dressed like she's just like a straight up substitute teacher at this school. <laughs> and she's his, she's tutoring him. And again, they both look like they're about five years younger than me. I don't need to be playing a fucking high school student in a movie. And they didn't, the thing is, they didn't need to be high school students. No! None of the settings involved, like... Occasionally, they are in a classroom in the beginning, but uh-huh. you can easily set it in a college. Make, it would be exactly the same. Yeah, make them college students. Or them being, like you just said, them being students factors into nothing. You can yeah. completely, re- you could just make it to where he just works in a junkyard. Yeah, honestly, you really could. Like, And I don't know, maybe she needs work on her car done or something, and that's how they get involved. It's it's honestly kind of contrived how they get her involved with that whole thing. Well, I just anyway. happened to walk to the junkyard at in 2 the in the, of the morning to give you these flash cards. flash cards that I wrote. Get in the truck! You know, I love, like, when you describe this movie, like, it hits all the cliches, so it sounds more awesome than it is, because I, I do love the idea of it. You know, monsters in trucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, these kids got to save these monsters uh-huh. from these evil oil drillers. <laughs> Rob Lowe is so evil. He's going to kill these monsters. And, you know, I don't fucking... I don't understand. Half of these movies, it doesn't make sense anyway. When they no. have, like, this vendetta against, like, oh, that whale, I hate that whale. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, um, <laughs> best line of Free Willy, I hate that whale. <laughs> but, um, but they have, you know, they have these monsters caught, uh, and Rob Lowe's, like, eating a Twizzler, like, mm-hmm. you know, we should just poison them and kill them so we can keep mm-hmm. grilling. Um, he's found out they're, Hive mind, intelligent, undiscovered creatures. <laughs> you could make so much more money mm-hmm. just exploiting these animals. He's like, nah, put them in the just, just poison where they live and kill them. We gotta get that oil. The what? Yeah, why? Like, this is the kind of movie that like your grandma would get you because she knows you like the movie Explorers. <laughs> you know, like that kind of movie. Like, one that's uh, not... Little Timmy loves trucks. I'm gonna get a movie with trucks in it. <laughs> you like E.T.? Here's Mac and me. Like, <laughs> like uh, okay, this movie's a little better than that. But... <laughs> yeah, I'll give him that. <laughs> Substitute Coke for Big Red, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, they, if they had a dance-off in a McDonald's, I would highly recommend this movie. <laughs> There's... The casting is so weird in this because the- I, I genuinely left when Danny Glover is like, "Hey, I'm back in this movie again." An hour later, yeah, and I forgot he was in it honestly until he showed up again. I was like, "Oh yeah," and then like he takes it very well that there's these monsters, and then when they're leaving, he's like, "Yeah, go get them." <laughs> he has he has it way better off than poor Amy Ryan does in this who is Lucas Till's mom who's in it one scene at the beginning when he's like I wish dad were still here and she's like yeah well you know just you know 
have fun at school, and then leaves and is not in the movie again until the final <laughs> montage at the end of the film where she's just standing with Barry Pepper waving at the truck going by. There are no scenes where Amy Ryan reacts to anything that goes on in the movie. For all she's, she knows, none of it happened. For all she knows, there were no story with the creatures in the trucks, and so she's just waving at him driving by in his new truck. She might not have no idea about all this shit that happened. Can I just say, there is no consequences to anything oh. in this movie. Even before any of the wildly ludicrous shit happens with uh -huh. the security team and the monsters in the trucks and the big chase and all mm. that, when Creech is first learning how to drive the truck, he straight up just goes through a car lot with yeah. people in it, driving over it with our lead in the, the front seat. Yeah. People see them and they're just like, I guess they're gone. I guess there's no consequences. <laughs> this movie does that all the time with like rampant destruction, just randomly crashing into like mail Fucking trucks and shit. Driving on roofs. No one else notices this. How about the fact that I'm pretty sure so many people are murdered in the climax of this film? So many people. <laughs> At first, it seems like they're trying to be like. Maybe they survived. We're not going to get into it. But then mm. there's things like when they overturn that truck of poison, it just flattens the top of it. I'm like, well, that driver's dead. Or like when Barry Pepper is driving this giant fucking thing that is the size of the canyon he's driving it through <laughs> and he mows it past trucks that have people jumping out of it yeah. there is no alternative to that scenario other than he ran those people over and just completely <laughs> flattened them because he moves past them but he is as wide as the canyon that they're in yeah. he, he just th those poor henchmen and then poor <laughs> holt mccallany who's the bad guy who's like he's the bad guy from he, he's pretty much the bad guy from short circuit like honestly, yeah, uh, this is that's that really is the kind of movie this is. It's short circuit if number five like hanging out in trucks, <laughs> which he kind of did a little bit. But like, um, he seems to get he crashes into what I think is like poison. Yeah, toxic waste or like it looks like he's melting. Yeah, it pours on him and he's like no, uh -huh. and then you never see him again. Like, well, he's dead. <laughs> Laura leaned over to me like, did he just melt? Is he, is, <laughs> you, it cuts back and he's like just a wet child like the end of Jason Takes Manhattan. <laughs> well, that just okay. makes no sense. <laughs> makes just as much sense as most of the other goddamn things How in this How badly did that guy need his job? Uh -huh. he's, just, he's just determined to murder these kids, these animals. Nothing stands in his way. Determined to go after these creatures with nothing but a cattle prod. That was kind of funny. Um, I genuinely laughed in the part where the monsters are doing all these flips in the air and then they land on the ground and Lucas Till and the girl are like, yeah! And it cuts to Thomas Lennon who just vomits everywhere. <laughs> I honestly got... That was, that was like the one like genuinely big laugh the movie got out of me <laughs> other than like smirking because like that guy's dead <laughs> um and other weird bits of casting too like how the fact that the like rich kid bully that amounts to nothing i thought it, that was gonna come to something and it didn't no it, it didn't but like the casting in that looks like if you cast Fred Savage to bully Patrick Swayze. There's nothing <laughs> legit about that at all. <laughs> Going back to that security guy, though, there's parts in it, too, that make no sense. Like, um, he's just chasing the kid around the town mm -hmm. in the truck, and rampant destruction. Yeah. And there's a chase. The sheriff's there, too, which is uh, our lead stepdad, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. And what was the lead character's name again? Um, you just said Lucas Till's the actor. He's the actor. Okay, Lucas uh, Till. <laughs> yeah. I already forgot his, his Creatures name. owner. Creatures owner. Anyway, <laughs> he's chasing them around, and then the sheriff's involved too. And then the, they get stopped by a train, and the sheriff's like, "Hey, what are you doing, chasing my my stepson around and like mm -hmm. doing all this shit around the town?" And, 
And he's just like, hey, don't forget, like, we employ you guys too, so when the next re election comes, da 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 da. Uh-huh. So basically, he just can act like the police and bully this kid, and no one has anything to say <laughs> yeah. about this. Uh-huh. Or, the, or when they're on the lot with his his, uh, his biological father, mm-hmm. and then they're just getting ready to, like, beat up and take the kid and just front yeah. everyone. Another piece of rampant destruction where the truck just yeah. drives through Frank Whaley's trailer. They did not do a good job of establishing that he was a deadbeat dad uh-huh. until he was going to like give him up to just get beaten up, I guess. Yeah. Because at first I was like, when they were talking about the accident, I completely spaced and I didn't know they were talking about the oil drilling thing from the beginning. So mm-hmm. I thought maybe there was some like traumatic thing that happened oh, where uh-huh. his character, like, you know, his dad was kind of off and maybe mm-hmm. people thought he was crazy and they were going to make amends or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he was like, he was drinking and I'm like, oh, alcohol equals bad, I guess. Yeah. And, then, and then he's like, I'm going to make some chicken wings. By the way, you're going with this guy. <laughs> Security. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell either if he was like a deadbeat dad at first or not because he seems to just live like a block away from them <laughs> so I'm like or, or if like he just well, he and he the mom said, just simply split up the ADR said like dad what's he doing here which implied he had been gone for some time yeah which oh. was really awkward lines like dad the, as if he's gonna talk to the news <laughs> the worst special effect in this movie was speaking of ADR is when they were standing at Holt McCallany and Barry Pepper are standing in front of that train going by which is an obvious <laughs> fake train going by them and because there's not actually a train there going by him they're talking in a level in a voice level to where like if this was actually happening you, you would be, be like able what to, huh? yeah I say we go, we got, I got to get past this train and get the monster. <laughs> and the creatures in it were fine. They were, like, clearly, like, manufactured cute. Like, there, there are some things that don't make sense to me about them. Were they supposed to, they were supposed to be living underground this whole time? Yeah. So they wouldn't have eyes. They wouldn't need them if they were just living underground. I well, would they think. Can, um, well, Unless they they've, like surfaced every once in a while. I they their their cave does lead to the surface, I guess. So I guess no one just um, ever discovered them. I don't know. I don't know. They're weird. They there like are things about them where I'm like, I I wish they they had humanized them a little less. Cause like they're it, like, it's fine to do like some cutesy things. Like they can learn about like waving or you know like humans do this equals this. That's fine. But like there are things like when they're just like kind of smiling and acting they like smile. people where it's like. Mm, that's a little too far fetched for yeah, me. I mean, monster trucks. <laughs> they smile. They laugh. They look like old. They look like adorable old men, <laughs> like cartoon, like old people. Um, when he has that line, Lucas Till, where he's just like, "Oh, you, big squish face" or whatever, where uh-huh. I'm like, mm, "That's a bad line." Like that's just yeah. like, ah, oh, because we know they're gonna be squishy, and kids are gonna think like, yeah. "Oh, big squish face." Squish. Like they're, they're they're so manufactured cute, and luckily they don't give them any annoying lines or anything like that. So it is impossible to hate them because then if you were to hate, if you were to want bad things to happen to them, you're just a sociopath watching this movie. Yeah, no, I mean, there's, there's cute things about them, like how they like they're bioluminescent, so they like glow when they're in the water, and oh, that looks that, really pretty. Well, well, here's what that looked like. That looked like that effect looked like someone shined a black light on them, and sometime in their sleep, Lucas Till jacked it all over him. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now that's what I think of. (laughs) Now, every time you watch this movie. (laughs) Every time. Every time. Every time I watch this movie, which I surely will, (laughs) not immediately forget that I saw it by tomorrow. With Phelan. (laughs) I liked... I liked fucking Rob Lowe gets his come up it's at the end sort of just during the montage at the end and you think something's gonna happen like he's gonna be like oh I'll sue you you can't take me down mm-hmm. and he just goes like <sighs> and leaves uh, he gets arrested and I'm sort of like I don't I know he's the bad guy but I don't know why he's getting arrested what, what like prove? right I guess well okay um scientist guy has lots of dirt on him about the illegal activity. So even if you don't talk about, like, the <laughs> massively public stuff that was going on, he could at least be like, okay, um, this is, he was, like, lying about this stuff and all these things over the years. So. Yeah, I mean, that's, like, kind of a he said, he said kind of thing, whereas, like, 
If Lucas Till is getting off scot-free for the destruction he's caused to half the town, like, it, it seems like even a shit lawyer would be able to get Rob Lowe off on all of this. <laughs> we'll also save it for the sequel. Oh, yeah. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know if that'll... I don't know if this, is, this movie's going to make its money back. <laughs> no. And oh. when Rob Lowe's, like, looking through her phone, like, ha, 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 you mm. like cats, huh? Ooh, pictures of the monster, delete, delete, delete. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you think getting the picture's gonna do anything? I was expecting them to be like, because we have the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> it's all saved. <laughs> we well, put it on Twitter already. <laughs> line that the producer's four-year-old wrote. Yeah, they, that's a, if you, uh, yeah, like, okay, if you need proof that the, this movie was, like, Co greenlit because of input from a four year old. There are two scenes in this movie where grown ass people are standing behind the wheel of a car just going, me, <laughs> like they're on a fucking race car bed. <laughs> Shit. Um, yeah. any, so I gotta save a little battery on here for the bye bye man. <laughs> um, any final thoughts uh, about uh, monster trucks? The trailer represents it exactly. If you've seen one of these movies, you've seen all of them, and you've you've seen this. So uh -huh. use that as your judgment. I don't really recommend it, but I don't unrecommend it either. So it's I, I I can't in good conscience recommend seeing this in the theater. There's there was really nothing that really captivated me about this movie. It's a movie that's slightly more fun to talk about than it is to watch. But there's nothing offensively bad about it. They're like I wasn't like just hating my life watching this thing. I I wasn't at all. Like I'm going to in due time I'm going to forget that I even saw this. But since there's there's way better movies you could be watching with your kids even at home. But if this is on Netflix and the kids like I want to see the movie with the monster in the truck it's not a terrible film. Like there are way worse options you could you could settle on. <laughs> um so I this could function fine in a scenario like that. Um other than that, this movie ain't making its money back. <laughs> it's hundred plus million dollar budget. So let's see how much better the bye bye man is. Ooh, it's the bye bye man. <laughs> Turn the light off. <laughs> see it. <laughs>